Michael Van Ronkel here for Hot Cars. I'm walking up to State Farm Stadium here in Phoenix, Arizona for Meekum's Glendale 2022 auction. It's day two, Thursday. They got through a little over 300 cars yesterday. So they're gonna have to up the pace if they wanna get through 1,500 by the end of Saturday night. Today, my goal is to give you a little bit closer look at some of the most incredible cars here. So we're gonna get inside the cars, we're gonna sit at them, we're gonna talk to the owners and get some good stories for you. And then I'm also hoping to get a chance to do some autocross in a 797 horsepower Dodge Challenger or Charger Red Eye. So let's get in there before the auction action starts. Although I think I hear the bidder is already going. I think I hear the auctioneer is already going, that is. Let's get in there and have some fun and see how Meekum's second day here in Arizona goes. Well, it's first thing in the morning here, but yep. The auctions have already begun. They're doing some signs from that big sign collection. The seller has a bunch of Corvettes for sale also. And this is a new voice. We didn't hear this auctioneer yesterday. So maybe things will be a little different today here on Thursday. So here we are in the middle of the floor, all the incredible cars. And the first thing I wanna show you is obviously a Plymouth Superbird with this iconic gigantic wing that made these cars able to do like 200 miles an hour on the big super speedways. This thing's got a 612 CI V8 and a four speed, because it's a nice tough four speed. And it's putting out apparently 675 horsepower. And with this big beak nose, it should have been a pretty fun car. One of my favorite details is the aerodynamic little spoiler vent here things. I would have guessed they were rear view mirrors, but turns out they're not. They're just maybe vents to increase downforce from the wheel wells, which we know air comes up through there at high speeds and creates a lot of lift. The interior is like classic 1970s muscle car. You got the pistol grip shifter. It's uh, pretty roomy in there. I don't know if I'd feel particularly safe going 200 miles an hour in there, but this is one of very few Plymouth Superbirds that will ever sell. More and more of them do seem to be popping up online these days, and Meekum actually has a second one that is also being auctioned at this very auction. It was parked right over there a minute ago, but now it's gone. I'll try and find that one. It's a green Superbird. But in the meantime, we're moving on to bigger and better things, if that even exists compared to a Plymouth Superbird. Well, out of the corner of my eye, I just saw the big rear wing and I thought this was a Superbird. It turns out this is a Dodge Daytona, sort of the progenitor of the Superbird. I believe they came first. This one's green on green and look at that green interior. It's awesome. Don't get to learn much about this car because this is in the preview section for Meekum's next auction at Indy where you're gonna see a Cobra and a GT and a Camaro. And we'll see if this Dodge Daytona can go for quite as much money as the Plymouth Superbird I just filmed with over there. Either way, it's a fun time here at Megan because these cars are so cool. Look at this beak. Well, you'd call it a beak on a Superbird, but maybe you wouldn't on a Dodge Charger Daytona. And it's got similar sort of air vents here for the wheel wells. It's just an awesome car. And of course, the quintessential enormous rear wing. Some of the Meekum guys were here just talking to me and they said these cars were totally frowned upon when they were new. And the only person one of them knew who had an actual Daytona was a janitor. So he grew up his whole life thinking a Dodge Charger Daytona is a janitor's car. Well, let me tell you that is one rich janitor now. The question is, will this Daytona go for more than that Superbird? at Indy in May. Only time will tell. All right, here we go. I'm in a Dodge Charger, red eye, 797 horsepower. We're doing a little autocross circuit. Theoretically, I should be good at this, but who knows? I haven't driven a Charger in a while now. All right, boss, you ready for this? I hope so. Okay, are we filming? Perfect. Yep. 
Keep this thing kind of in between. Don't get your apexes too tight or you're going to start clipping cones. Yeah. Leave yourself a little bit a little bit of room on the inside, kind of run the middle. This one will be kind of a practice lap, so the second lap will pick up the pace a little bit. All right. Lost the backpack already. That's a tight turn. Is that good? 28.66 doesn't sound impressive to me. All right, this time I'm in a challenger. Got a pretty questionable lap time last time. All right, lap two. Lap there we two. go. You want to pick up the pace on this one? Yeah, thank you. Are you ready? Ready. Tight turn. Three seconds faster, 10%, but still not too good. Gotta hit that accelerator harder and hit those brakes harder, but ton of fun. Reminds me of why I love these Challengers and Chargers. Dodge continuing to kill it. Heavy car, still fun in the autocross. Well, that's pretty fun. It's pretty cool they've got this spectacle going. There's a nice line to drive the red eyes. I logged uh, 25.6. Uh, I didn't see anyone do faster there, but they told me it was not the fastest time on the day. Pretty embarrassing. I guess I should be a professional driver by now, but autocross in a big, heavy vehicle, not really my specialty. I've only done autocross once before. Now it's time to get back into the auctions and check out what's going on inside now. So this 1937 Ford Custom is definitely one of the stars of the show. It's gonna auction off on Saturday with all the best cars. Even calling it a Ford Custom Cabriolet is kind of crazy because this is a 1937 Ford that was originally a one-off build. So it was a period hot rod that has since been sort of completely restored and customized about 20 years ago. Owner and consigners are a father-son duo named Jerry and Aaron Ruskin. And they walked me through some of the incredible stories behind this car. It was originally built for Baron von Kuhn, but I would call him the Baron of Kuhl. That was in Germany. He hired a shop in Copenhagen to build the car for him. They've got photos documenting it hiding from the Nazis in France, which is insane. Eventually, it ended up in America where it received even further customization. It's got a 514 CI V8 under the hood that they had dyno tested and it put out 650 horsepower at the wheels after it got fuel injection. Pretty nice. But you can see everything is perfectly, perfectly clean, perfect lines. One of the most insane details is if you look up under there and the camera probably can't show this, there's chrome under the hood where no one will ever look. And that shows you some of the impeccable attention to detail that went into this car. You can see the grill is all of these louvered pieces of brass chrome. All of the chrome is handmade brass. You've got headlights that follow the teardrop lines. You come up to curved bumpers and fenders here. Smooth transition to a line. Walking around, the chrome continues. It's just all handmade individual pieces. This piece of chrome that starts so tiny transitions all the way around the cabriolet top here, all the way to the rear, and it's one piece. And there's a matching one on the other side. And then if you look at the lines of the rear wheel fenders, they connect here with the tail light, custom exhaust in the back. It's just, everything is completely custom, one off, perfect. Chip Foose checked out this car, and he said to just do this paint job would cost $300,000 alone. Now, apparently, in the early 2000s when this build was being completed, the whole build cost 860 grand. And the owner knew that they would never get that money out. So they ended up donating the car to the Peterson. 
It then went to Budnick, the wheel company. They built these absolute custom wheels. It took them a year to build these wheels. And then eventually the owner, Jerry, got the car back and he's had it here and he's bringing it to Meekum to sell on Saturday. But let's take a look at some of the little interior details that are equally as crazy. Coming in here, how do you even get in? There's no handles. Well, there's a nice secret button under the dash here and it just pops open. You can see these are Italian leather seats that the owner who commissioned the restoration specified because he liked the leather on his sofa. Apparently, those speaker covers are from an Italian lampshade that could cost like $5,000. Climbing in here, I'm gonna sit in and make sure that I don't scratch the leather with anything. And you can see the original gauges are like super art deco square. And even though it says Ford there, it's in German, uh, I think. I don't read German, you got miles per hour and kilometers per hour, and we've got Wasser Temp, which reminds me of Wasser cooled, water cooled Porsches. It's just, everything is absolutely gorgeous. I hope that the light's showing you the detail here. Banjo style steering wheel. It's just about as good as it gets. The question is, how, how much is this thing? $860,000 restoration. How much can it fetch 20 years down the road, even though it's still in impeccable shape? I literally walked up to this thing and the owner, Jerry, was down under the car cleaning the undercarriage because he's that obsessive about caring for this masterpiece. Even though it's a gorgeous park and show car, let's see how it sounds when he fires up that 650 horsepower Ford V8. Sounds pretty good. And best of all, this thing has air conditioning. One of the cool parts of Meekum is that if you want to see an engine crank over, you can just find one of the Meekum guys and they'll do it for you. So this is a 1972 Dodge Dart Swinger. It's got a 383. We're gonna listen to this thing fire up, courtesy of this guy right here in the driver's seat. Sounds pretty good, let's go see some other muscle cars. This one's a 68 Oldsmobile 442, 350 horsepower from a 400 CI V8. Let's turn it over. Ooh, it's getting toasty here. We are in Phoenix, Arizona, even though it's like early spring. It's, wait, it's not even spring yet. It's already warming up, but man, the sound of that 502. That'll get the blood boiling. Really cool that you can just walk around and they'll prove that those engines will crank over. You, you can do like what's called a cold start even though it's hot out. But, you know, some of these cars, they do have dead batteries when they show up or they're parked here for a few days before they go to the block. Batteries die. And Meekum has a whole team that's making sure that these cars are ready to go, ready to fire up, making sure the batteries don't die. And they're vetting them on the way in making sure numbers matching engines are matched with numbers matching cars, and the titles match the VIN numbers on the dash, and etc. It's a pretty serious operation trying to auction 1,500 cars, and I'm just glad that I got to see a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff about how this all gets done. So this is interesting. I'm walking along in the shade outside of State Farm Stadium now. Right over there in that parking lot are all the cars that already sold so far on Wednesday and Thursday. The area I'm walking through is called The Bid Goes On, and these are all the cars that have not sold yet. And they put the amount that they were bid up to on the windshield, and people can go down to a booth over there and place more bids. But it's like the graveyard of cars, and some of these are really surprising. 35 grand for this Chevy pickup. Really nice. 20 grand, that's all this hot rod got? I love it. This GTO went up to 89 didn't sell. Little Boxster, 20 grand, high bid. 280Z, 14,000. Those are a famous problem because they're impossible to smog in California. But there's this whole lineup of cars that are still available. And it's sort of a difference between online auctions now 
where there's a hard cutoff, and in-person auctions here at Meekum where you can sort of keep the game going. And every now and then the auctioneers will announce that one of the cars out here ended up selling when somebody placed a bid later on. So it's another consideration for watching the transition from live auctions to in-person auctions, and in-person auctions are definitely still thriving. Today is way busier than it was yesterday, and there are definitely cooler cars coming around. So let's keep an eye out for even more. And this one should be real good. 57 Chevy 210 with a 502 under there. Look at that. Let's get around back. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. They should definitely rev that when it goes across the block. Well, that's it for our video coverage of Meekum's Glendale 2022 auction. Walking back to the car, I'm starting to think, like, what did I learn here? Well, in addition to the spectacle of the Dodge Power Party and all the incredible cars, it was cool to be able to get a behind the scenes look at how in-person auctions work. It's a lot of fun, there's a lot of anticipation when some of the cars start going up high and the auctioneers are rattling off numbers. And then you also get to experience that the bid goes on section. I think that's probably my main takeaway because with a live auction, you can now continue bidding after something doesn't meet reserve. It's an interesting format that I didn't know existed and I'm curious if that will continue to grow as online bidding continues to grow. Meekum's rep said that they're at about 30% online bids now coming in to the live auctions, which is a pretty high number, but I guess it makes sense, especially as the quality of photos on listings online continues to increase. I hope you learned something watching this. I hope you've had fun looking at some of these incredible cars with me. As always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel before you sign off and follow at hotcars.com because we're gonna have a bunch of stories about what we saw here and how successful this Meekum auction was here at Glendale 2022. Thanks.